wiosła. Good evening. Dobry wieczór. Mesdames et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen. I'm one of the women of Warsaw who are having just a collective meditation on the state of things. It's very absurd because I'm speaking English in a French gallery and there are Polish artists. But I want to thank Tristan from Gallery Us, who is hosting us here. And he allowed artists from Warsaw to be in a stateless situation because it's like quoting your famous Enfant Terrible from Paris, uh, Monsieur Jarry. It takes place in Poland, meaning nowhere. Mm. So welcome here, and thank you for having us. We just want to share a little bit of what has been happening recently in Warsaw. As we know, we live in interesting times, and things are happening everywhere right now. Um, thanks to Howl Round <coughs> from Boston, everything is being transmitted directly, and you can get online, you can get um, into live transmission, and the address is howlround.com slash TV. And also, I understand, we can check it later. So it's right now, whatever happens here will be transmitted directly to Boston, to the States, to Poland, and I'm sure also to our friend Vladimir Putin. <laughs> so, cheers to everyone. Thank you. And may we live in peace. Thank you.
beatboxing. Beatboxing. B. B. C. C. K. K. C. C.
my body, my position. You want to scream about it? No. You want to make it loud? No. No. Try. No, I don't want to say it to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. Because you're here, and uh, if I scream, it doesn't go anywhere. Because if I speak, it goes to everyone, and it's directed to everyone. But if I scream, it goes into <coughs> space. Well, very general space, but there is no one in general space. Nobody wants to listen to me in general space right now. But these people want to listen to me. Okay? And we're sitting here right now, and they kind of have to sit here because they feel stupid leaving because there aren't enough people to actually leave. Because if they leave, then everyone will notice, so they're going to have to stay here. But if <laughs> someone leaves, then they're going to feel very embarrassed. And then they're going to feel a little bit uh, like, you know, rebels or something. So they're staying here, even though they're not listening to us, really. They don't really care. But it's okay, I wouldn't care either. Because it's not. Today, mm. actually, if they don't want to scream, you, you can cast other people to speak with you, and then you have, you know, this amount amplification of the voice. But you need to choose one sentence, for example, that everybody will agree to repeat it. Mm. <coughs> so, what sentence do you want to say? About women. About women. Yeah, okay. The solidarity of women. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. yeah. So we did what we did last month. Mm -hmm. So what did you do last month? What did you say that was? Solidarność yes, kobietą. 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 So you translated into English. So we got I'm gonna <laughs> solidarity is a woman. Yeah, solidarity is a woman. Solidarity is a woman. Okay, so okay, but then mm, mm, try to make we need more languages well. because we need more languages because the more languages the further it goes on in the world. What for? Because then it you know it's uh it's like the whole Occupy Wall Street thing that, you know, the, the chain. It's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how many, how many languages do you know? <laughs> okay. Did you understand <laughs> this? <laughs> yeah? No, no, Can no, you no, say no, it in French? You don't speak French. Okay. Does anyone speak French here in Paris? <laughs> Ask in French. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one phrase and repeat it from one mouth to another. Let's say solidarity is a woman at the start and it passes and then it passes through. This is human microphone. They occupy a Wall Street use it. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. illegal to use anything like Yeah, but you just said it out loud so it can't be the same thing. I think uh, if I say solidarity is a woman, it passes. No, but everyone heard it. Everyone didn't know it. No, I so know if they hear it. Do you hear what we're saying? <coughs> yeah, it's, it's very, it's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's very difficult. This is all very difficult. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Solidarity is a woman. Stop it. Stop it. Who is she? This is Malone. Malone. Solidarita. She um, she gave Madame Curie told grams of radium. Solidarity is a woman. Solidarity is a woman. Idź już, Pardiorze, załatwiłem się z tobą, ale na moją zieloną świeczkę przysięgam na starą ulicę, że cię zrobię księciem Gitwy. Ale cicho sieć, słodkie dziecię, wychodzą. Czego pan sobie życzy? Wynocha stąd, mnóżysz mnie. Panie, jest pan wezwany przed króla. Och, gruwno, kiecko niebieska, na moją zieloną świeczkę. Odkryto mnie, zetnął mnie. Och, 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 och. Co za flag? A czas nagli. Och, mam myśli. Powiem, że to ubica i barbio. Och, ty stary łaj, jeżeli to zrobisz, Aha, już lecę. Wychodzi. Ubica. Goniąc za nim. O, ubu, o, ubu. Ja tobie dam usztarny. Wybiega. Za sceną. Grówno. Samaś musztarda. Scena szósta. Pałac Królewski. Król Wacław w otoczeniu swoich oficerów. Barbior. Synowie Królewscy. Bolesław, Władysław i Wyczesław. Potem ubu. Wychodząc. Och! Wiecie, to nie ja. To ubica i barwy. Co tobie, ojcze ubu? Za wiele wypił. Tak, 
Jestem pijany. Za wiele piłem francuskiego winka. Ubu, chcę nagrodzić twoje liczne zasługi jako rotmistrza dragonu. Mianuję cię dziś hrabią Sandomierza. O, tak słabie. Panie mój, nie wiem jak pan Um, 
about people. It's just very disgusting. And today, I feel sick and I feel very disgusting. Not because I'm sick, but I feel disgusting because the main aspect of my being is kind of brought down to my body and I hate this. This is horrible. I think as human beings, we should really kind of be higher than our bodies. We should have intellect. We should have ideas. We should have culture. We should have civilization, you know, we should have, like, we should be bigger than everything else, you know, we should really kind of conquer nature, we should conquer our own nature, we should, we shouldn't even think about nature, you know, nature is really dull, nature is really nothing, nature is horrible, who cares about nature, nature is disgusting, this is disgusting, I hate the fact that I'm here, I'm disgusting, my body is here, and it's disgusting, I hate myself, it's disgusting, I'm sweating right now, and it's disgusting, and I smell myself, and it's disgusting, Actually, I have saliva in my mouth right now because I'm talking so fast and it's really disgusting. And right now I'm really hot and it's disgusting. And I feel heat and it's disgusting. I feel my fingers right now and it's really disgusting. I see these people outside and they're really cold and I think it's really disgusting. Because they have to think about things like cold and their bodies and stuff like that. And they're going to go and have dinner in a moment and they're going to like slop all this stuff into their mouth. And then they're going to swallow and it's going to go through all their intestines and then they're going to it's going to go into like through their ass and they're going to shit it out and it's all really disgusting and to imagine that all this stuff for a moment was part of their body and it was so disgusting but their body's also disgusting so the disgustingness of the food it met the disgustingness of their body and their organs and it's all just really disgusting and it's an orgy of disgust and it's just all disgusting and we're all disgusting and we're all here and we're looking at each other and we're really disgusting and we're sniffing each other and we're like sitting next to each other probably like touching each other and it's really disgusting we're all here and we have to share the space because we're fucked because we have to stay here and it's really disgusting <laughs> smoking today, as it's my first day in Paris, so I made myself a um, flannery. I want to be a flanner for a while. Of course, there is a strong reference of a woman walking on the street in the times of Baudelaire and the prostitutes can walk freely without aim. So we are on Pigalle. But I came from Pigalle to Hotel de Ville. And I was haunted by a voice, a calling. It was a very beautiful voice, very strong voice. And very much amplified. It was coming from the big square. You could hear the resonance. It was very strong. And I started walking toward this direction and discover a Syrian singer. She was singing like. Nahmedu. The 
were singing continues and the people were gathering in front of in front of the building and there was one worker sweeping the floor and he he took this song, the motif and started whistling it in a very funny way, a little bit like a musical way. But I'm not going to say it loud. <coughs> I tell you, in your ear. <coughs> so he wrote that the last stop of the Flaner is a shopping mall. So I came to the shopping mall. It's a very natural consequence of walking in the city, isn't it? So it was, it was a department in Gallery Lafayette called Objet Trouvé, the found object. There was a lady sitting and I asked her, what was the most strange object that you found in your gallery? And she said, Also, this old man that came into the metro and looks like a beggar. But instead of begging, he starts his narration about Michel de Montaigne and friendship, unity.
tomorrow she's going to buy some new clothes. I'm going to take, take her to the gallery of Lafayette shop. Okay. An ultimate Parisian experience. When I said that I'm sick, I'm really sick. Do you want to go uh, home? No, I don't want to go home. It doesn't make any difference if I go home or not. Actually, I think that um, in France, your health system for sure is much better. So I think it's better for me to stay in France and go to a doctor and you see, uh, I, I have this um, illness, it turned out I've been diagnosed um, three days ago, and um, it's a very rare illness, and you know, one in apparently five Five or fifty million people get it, so I guess it's not so rare actually. Um, yeah, and you have very strange symptoms. Uh, first of all, you don't want to eat certain foods. They just taste very disgusting. But then, you really want to eat a lot of other foods. So, you have a big appetite, but you also have a very, very low appetite. So, it's an illness of many parts of your body. Um, it's an illness of uh, your respiratory system. <coughs> It's an illness of your nervous system. What do you want? It's an, er it's an illness of um, your blood system. Do you want an egg? All of your organs start behaving very strange. No. They start transforming into other beings. You don't recognize them anymore. They're not yours. They live in your body but they are not yours. They're autonomous beings, and they start to have a party in your own body. Nice. And you cannot <laughs> control them at all. They transform into very strange beings. It's like a horror movie in your own body. Or like, or like, hello, yeah. Are you or like happy? a science fiction movie. Are you happy? Uh, Do you like to be strange? I'm not. Okay. Some people do that on purpose, you know? I know. Did you make it on purpose? <coughs> what? Did you make yourself strange on purpose? Why such things happening? Probably happening in Krakow. <laughs> that was just a story I told. Real. Very nice story. <laughs> Thank I you. Mean, it's real. Okay, I have no more questions. Follow me. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Mm -hmm. I would like to share that there's a mm, there's an extra performer here, but nobody knows. But he had this tactic of being on the margins of the performance. Mm -hmm. But through these mm. margins, he feels that he can influence reality of the performance and through the performance of reality in general. Wojtek um, is tall, he's slim, he has glasses, he has a round face, thin, dark pink lips, blue eyes. He's around 50, let's say. <coughs> he's sitting. He's trying not to be visible. And he can't move anymore. There is no charger. So I'm going to read you as long as my battery uh, allowed me. And it's just 11%, so it's not really, not really long. 11% of battery, that's the time. <coughs> and this is the text that is, that uh, came to me uh, while we were protesting in Warsaw, on the black protest. I organized something like a warm-up for girls and women before going to the streets and protesting. So we were dancing, singing, trying the voice emission, but also like being together, improvising, listening to each other and stuff. More bark, more bite. All playing can be seen as an extension of singing. The voice and extensions represent the musical dimension of men, women, children, and animals. Cornelius Cardi. Now close your eyes and listen. Try to imagine my voice. Is the sensual voice of a telephone sex operator is it nice and cool, like an airport announcer leading you to your gate? I want this voice to guide you and arouse your curiosity. I want it to become your fetish. <coughs> I will recall the tale of Pythagoras, who taught his students who are hidden behind the curtain. Throughout the five years of study, his <coughs> pupils never saw the source of the master's voice. The phenomenon of the voice decoupled from the speaker is what Michel Schion, boring the composer and music concrete scholar Pierre Schaeffer, called the acousmatic voice. For decades, a voice heard the radios and loudspeakers commented on events, called for action and pointed our enemies. A voice that millions through was the own, the voice of the crowd. 
The moment before the, the election, Donald Trump's ally, Ben Carson, replied to a third question from an MSNBC journalist by saying to the program's host, can we turn this lady microphone off? A few months earlier, in the middle of Europe, a female uh, tenants' rights activist had her microphone turned off during a city hall committee meeting. Still, she didn't stop speaking and shouted out her demands to change the city policy. And public speaking has been a male domain since ancient times. A woman speaking publicly is a phenomenon from between two worlds, a non-woman, an androgen. Her alien sound irritates the audience. Antique writings do not usually stress the lack of content in the female speech but rather is acoustic quality. The female voice is compared to the sounds made by animals, such as cows and dogs. It is perceived as noise and disturbance. The art of rhetoric, speaking about grave matters, <coughs> requires one to master a deep male voice. And Margaret Thatcher, who at the beginning of her political career was often forbidden from speaking in the name of the party because she possessed the shrill voice of a housewife, knew that well. The Iron Lady voice was calm, strong and deep. It was the voice of authority. The most famous and infamous tones of British politics were the effect of years of training which the British Prime Minister received from the Royal Theatre College voice projection teacher. And let's imagine an immigrant trying to learn the English language and to lose the accent which betrays his origin. Thatcher, despite having the privilege of being born white and British as well as speaking flawless Queen's English, had to get rid of her female sound which betrayed not quite her sex, but the existence of what had been expelled from the public sphere. The abstract voice of authority, so overdone as to become a mockery of the blind trust we place in it, is Laurie Anderson, vocal mask. The American artist uses a vocoder and various effects which lower her voice to create an alter ego, the Fenway Bergamot. There is something that we can call the biopolitics of the voice. And the ancient Greeks had two words for life. It was zo, which stood for life in itself, primal and wild, the opposite of thanatos, and bios, the life of an individual, a period of time ending in death. George Agamben considers these two words with the context of biopolitics. Bios is life within the political realm, the actualization of life within the limits set out by the community. And so, on the other hand, is life excluded from the community and its exclusion given a foundation allowed to exist. The excluded serves as a mute, invisible substrate holding up the political form. And this mechanism of inclusive exclusion is the foundation of Western politics. And during the black protest on October 3rd, 2016, tens of thousands of women across Poland came out on the streets to protest against a proposed law <coughs> banning abortion. In their comments, many members of the ruling party accused the opposition of dehumanizing women. We won't allow Polish women to be dragged out into the streets, said one female member of the parliament. Polish women are not cattle or dogs that you can just drag out somewhere, wrote women on the internet. In his Metamorphoses, Ovid recounts the story of an Athenian princess Philomela, who was raped by Theros, the husband of her sister, Procne. In order to hide the truth about this crime, the king of Thrace cut out the girl's tongue. This way, Philomela was raped again. She was silenced, deprived of the symbolic structure and the part of her body. A new means of communication was born from this rape 
of her freedom. The princess wore warm patterns in cloth that revealed the brutal truth of what had been done to her. When her sister dropped and received the cloth, her rage was unspeakable. She couldn't find the right words to express it. The language of her father was unable to encompass the pain and indignation. Her revenge was terrible. She fed her husband the son's flesh, transgressing the patriarchal order and forcing Terus to undergo the female experience of carrying another human being with within him. As a woman, Philomela had no political rights but remained an Athenian citizen. This reminds me of a commentary by the Indian writer and activist Arundhati Roy on the tragic events which took place in Delhi 2012. She said that these events received wide attention only because the victim was a member of the middle class. Innumerable women who experienced sexual violence never speak out. Because silence of victims is a silence caused by the weight of complicity. It seems that the social order is broken, not by the rapist act, but by the victim's testimony. Likewise, how can we give voice to animals and our abused planet? The battery ends to be continued. Thank you for your attention and for, thank you for your patience. It's a very small space and we actually thought that maybe you are not sitting like in a theater, but just you are free to walk and talk and, and maybe commune. There are several other artists here from Poland. We are tomorrow presenting uh, five young Polish women directors and we'll explain why we call them father killers. Two of them are here. Uh, there is Anna Smolar and Magda Spett, <laughs> who are just present here. But here in the video, you'll see scenes uh, also from their work intertwined with some scenes from Warsaw and Poznan protests. Uh, and also work of other women. We called just this kind of collage, Siren 451. We have a very secret situation where we know why it's called 451. And we thank you very much.